So one of the things um, that has always surprised me in New York is how few people know what their rights are in terms of demonstrating. So I just want to go over basically first what your rights as a demonstrator are, and this is particular to New York City. So uh, we love the Constitution. It gives us a right to free speech and freedom of assembly. Um, but what does that really mean? So we have a right to call a demonstration um, without asking for police permission to do it. So we have a right to say, hey, we're going to demonstrate in Times Square at 5 o'clock, and we don't have to go to the police department and ask for a permit to do that. Um, so, but we don't have a right to uh, block the sidewalks. So whatever we do, we have to make sure that we're still allowing for pedestrian flow and for traffic flow. Um, so that's why we tend to try to start demonstrations in places that have plazas or a big sidewalk. And that's why we try to end demonstrations in places that have a plaza or a big sidewalk because we know that we legally have a right to take up that space as long as we leave some space for pedestrians. Um, so in general, on a regular narrow sidewalk, you still have a right to demonstrate there. Um, and generally, the legal way that we demonstrate on a narrow sidewalk is by doing a moving picket. And everybody knows what I mean when I say a moving picket. So you walk in a circle, you hold a sign, you chant, you clap. All of that is completely legal. You have a right to uh, carry signs. You have a right to chant. You have a right to blow whistles. You have a right to dr drum. You have a right to do, uh, so with the signs, uh, Paper signs are good, foam core signs are good, they're not really ecological. Um, what you don't want to do is bring a sign on a wooden stick um, or on a metal pole. So sometimes you'll see people come to demonstrations with signs on sticks. And that is problematic because the police can occasionally say that it could be used as a weapon. And so sometimes the police flip out if people bring signs on sticks or pipes. Or, so uh, that's, uh, generally, uh, we ask people not to do that. And that's also true of flags. So you'll see experienced activists come with a flag on a cardboard tube, because a cardboard tube is not a weapon. Because if you bang someone over the head with it, hopefully the tube will crack and the person will be OK compared to like a two by four or a broomstick. So now this goes back to union organizing because the unions used to pick it when they would go on strike. And it was really convenient because if you put your sign on a pipe and there's a scab or someone trying to break the strike, you can go over and whack, whack them and take care of them. Now, we're nonviolent. We don't do that. Um, but one of the things you, you, may wanna, uh, you may end up doing as a marshal is going up to someone and saying, hey, um, it's a great sign, but just so that you know that the rule in New York is that you're not supposed to have your sign on a stick or a pipe, and the police may confront you with it. So it's up to you whether you want to take it off or leave it on, but just so that you know what the rule is. And a lot of what you do as a marshal is informative. You're not giving someone a direction. You're not telling them, hey, you got to take that off, or you, gotta, you can't carry that. But you're just letting them know that they're putting themselves at some risk and what the, what, the, what the rules are. So uh, generally, any kind of sign is OK. Um, you can have curse words on the sign. So you can have a sign that says, fuck Trump. Um, what you uh, can't have is anything that is pornographic. So for example, you can have hand sketched private parts, because that's art, but you can't have photographs of them because that's pornography. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, so it's, it's just the way it is. So if you're, you know, so sometimes people may come up and say that, you know, someone's sign is offensive and you can talk about it. But essentially, a sign can say anything anybody wants to put on it. There's no, there are no language problems. Uh, and it can have a picture of anything on it as long, as, again, as it's not uh, pornographic. So there's a, a lot of room to be offensive. Um, 
so we're picketing, uh, and the, the thing about chanting or making noise, unless you are in a hospital quiet zone, which will have signs that say hospital quiet zone, you can chant at the top of your lungs, you can whistle, you can make as much noise as you want, completely legal. The only thing you can't do is use amplification. So even a ticky tacky little $10 battery operated megaphone, which doesn't, isn't that loud, violates that rule. But you can bellow and make as much noise as you want as long as it's acoustic. And the paper cone is acoustic. Uh, so like a 1920s styles megaphone. Yeah, cymbals are, are totally fine. They're really loud cowbells. Any, anything, triangles, whatever you want. Um, so uh, uh, a moving picket with all those things uh, is legal. We just need to make sure that there's room for pedestrians to walk by. And a sidewalk march uh, as long as people are walking on the sidewalk and so they're not taking up traffic lanes is also completely legitimate. Um, again, with the signs, the noise, and everything else. Uh, oddly enough, what often gets us into arguments with the police is that it is completely legal to hand out leaflets to passers-by as long as you are not doing it aggressively in terms of blocking them and as long as you are not aggressively blocking entrance to a building trying to leaflet people. So if you're trying to leaflet people going into a building, you can't like stand right in front of the door and make people take a leaflet, but you can stand a couple feet away from the door and say, please take a leaflet. Um, the police really don't like that, um, particularly um, if they have a pen set up um, when I say a pen, does everybody know what I'm referring to? So uh, in the olden days, it used to be the blue wooden barricades, and now they're the interlocking metal barricades. Um, so a lot of times, if the police have a demonstration in a pen, and we'll get to that a little later, they'll want the leafleters inside the pen, and they'll say, you can't leaflet, you can't be outside the pen, you have to be inside the pen. That is not true at all. You have a right to not be in the pen as a demonstrator. You have a right to not be in the pen as a leafleter. Um, you just can't be blocking people's access into buildings or, or making it so that someone can't get by on the sidewalk. So that's sort of a summary of what's the realm of what's completely legal to do that you don't need any police permission to do. So permits are needed for a couple of things. Um, they're needed for sound amplification devices, and that's exactly the same whether it's one of those $10 megaphones or whether it's like a Gigantor sound system with a stage. So, and you get those at the local precinct unless you want to do it in a park, in which case you have to go to the parks department. Um, a permit is also necessary for anything that requires street closure. And that's whether you want to do like a block party kind of demonstration or whether you want to march in the street for a long duration. So uh, because if the police have to close down streets and reroute traffic, technically they want you to get a permit for that. Um, you also need a permit to be to have a demonstration in or at least a, a demonstration more than 25 or so people in a New York City park. So if you want to do a demonstration inside Washington Square Park that's big, technically you're supposed to have a permit for it, but generally if you don't have a sound thing, they let people do it. Uh, and you definitely need a permit if you want to be inside a city where the city hall area in city hall, it's not in city hall park, but where the steps are. Uh, because that area is usually closed off to the general public. So if you want to have a demonstration on the steps of City Hall, you have to get a special permit for that. Um, but otherwise, outside of those things, you don't need a police permit, which means you don't have to talk to the police ahead of time. So I have a thing about not talking to the police ahead of time. It's always been my position that you get a stronger, better demonstration 
when you don't pre-negotiate what you want to do with the police. So if you wanted to do, to start your Times Square demonstration with a rally, with a sound stage and a sound system, you'd have to go to the police and the police would say, listen, we understand you have a right to freedom of speech, but at five o'clock at night on a weekday, we're not giving you a sound stage and a permit and a street closure. And they'll say, you know what, instead of Times Square, let's, you can go down to Foley Square, which people have been down to demonstrations in Foley Square, right? It's really deadly, right? But the reason people have demonstrations there is that's where the police want to give you a permit for. So the police do not have to give you a permit for the date, the time, or the location you want. And that's how you get things like 12 noon at Foley Square on a Sunday. But rush hour on a weekday, there aren't too many places they're going to want to give you a permit for. So we do things that don't require permits. And then we make the best of it. Um, so uh, on the other hand, there are some times when you really have special people who you want to have speak. And it's really absolutely important to have them speak because it's information. And in those cases, you might say, you know what, it's more important to do something in a time and a location where we're not being disruptive because Times Square at 5 o'clock is disruptive, but Foley Square at noon on Sunday is not, but maybe it's really important f for people to hear those speeches, and so we do that. Um, so for this particular event, a decision has been made that it's more important to be disruptive and to do it on the day, not find out something happened, apply to the police, get a permit, for some other day, some other time, some other place. Because this has to be rapid response, you can't ask for a permit ahead of time. Because the police aren't going to give you a blank ticket for uh, any day in the next year at 5 o'clock on any weekday in Times Square with a sound permit. If you are in a pen for any demonstration, the police are required to have a clear opening for you to go in and out of. At, you know, so if you think of like a, a one block square pen, at one end of it, there should be an entrance uh, and or exit um, that is open. And if it's not, the marshals have to insist that there be, you know, people can't be penned in so that they can't enter or leave. You have to be able to freely enter or leave.